This is a special edition of Late Night Health. I'm Mark Allen, along with Amy Summers from Pitch Publicity. And we are here at Natural Products Expo West. And we are here on uh, International Women's Day. And we are here to get a behind the scenes look at our upcoming series of Elephant in the Room. And we're gonna focus on sexism. Yeah, we're really excited to have some of our panelists that are going to be in some of our sessions um, with us today. And we're not going to talk about what we're going to talk about on the panel today. You're going to have to watch the panels. You'll have to go to anisibox.com to register if you're not already registered. That's I-N-I-C-B-O-X.com and hit the button at the top. Um, but today we're going to get more of a uh, industry-wide um, idea of what's happening with our panelists that are talking to us today as well as how they operate in their own companies and I'm so happy to welcome Heather Weiner. she's publisher of Whole Foods magazine so everybody knows Heather and Kenta Schelke she is founder of Corvus Blue and she's also a PhD and Kenta is uh, joining us for our session two and Heather is a moderator on our session four so welcome thank you for joining us today Thank thanks you for having me. me. Yeah, thanks. So, Heather and, and uh, Kantha, uh, you're both great educators uh, in this industry. Kantha, I know you speak at many uh, conferences, and Heather, uh, you helped launch a very successful virtual conference um, called Naturally Informed. Mm -hmm. Do you think men and women uh, presenters get an equal amount of time uh, on stage at our industry? Um, Who wants to take it? I'll take it. Right. Um, well, being that we have talk, spoke about Naturally Informed, that's actually been something that we've actually been really conscious of um, in making sure that we have a diverse amount of speakers. And um, in the past, if you do look at history um, of other presenters and other education, you see a lot of white men. Right. Um, that's but kind it's been of a conscious thing. decision. Uh -huh. You had to really yes, look so at it. Yes, so we've actually, yeah. Um, and as things have changed, and I do believe that women have been popping up more, and we have people like Kantha who have definitely stepped up. And um, it's we do make it a conscious decision because there are plenty of women out there and people of color that are just as well known or well, spe well spoken and good educators as there are white men. So and how about you, uh, uh, Do I think that we get equal time mm -hmm. as yes. our male counterparts? Yes. An emphatic no. <laughs> I was just saying, I can't wait to hear Kant's response. The DNA of the natural food industry, much like the DNA of the uh, sector of science or the food industry at large, is tarnished by gender biased um, differences that favors the other gender. So take, for example, uh, you know. Uh, our own nutrition business journal conferences. What proportion of women are keynoters, um, panelists, or even presenters? A very, very dismal, small fraction. And this is this DNA de fact is particularly glaring, given the situation that the food industry or the natural product industry, from end to end, has women dominating it mm -hmm. at every node production to processing to selling and buying to using it to influencing the community and even with coming up with innovations yet they are conspicuous by their absence at the presentation part at the at the conference part and that's where you get the male counterpart the masters as they call them you know being um, the light is shone on them and they're often more often than not flanked and served by a female counterpart who plies them with information and even a juice of their choice, right, some beverage, <laughs> and keeps them informed so they can appear knowledgeable. And Kent, I know that you, you mentioned Nutrition Business Journal, and I just want to say that we're not calling anyone out, you know, specifically, but Tom Arts, just so you know, this is great news. He is going to be in our After the Elephant session, after session five, so I know he's going to be watching the entire series. And the whole point of this is just to raise awareness on it, because I think sometimes people don't even realize, you know, sometimes you just go back to the people you always had, like you said, Heather, even as a female running Naturally Informed, mm -hmm. it was a conscious decision. You had to say, yes. okay, we're going to make sure that we have 
different people. I had to do that for Elephant Series too because we have so many white men in our industry. I had to really think about it. Okay, you know, what does it look like? And you know, do we have great representation from men and women? I, for me, I didn't want to make this an all women's thing as well. But while we we're and on, I thank you for that. Oh, because <laughs> Mark is here. And it's not about white men. It's just about the agenda. The world at large has more women but it's the men who are making the decisions. And this is yeah. a brilliant thing. And it's mm -hmm. not about giving women more chances. Mm -hmm. It's about breaking down the obstacles that have prevailed for so long so we can do things together equitably. But and, and, speaking, and speaking of which, I just want to jump off that. So you came into the food science part of the industry as a woman, and that must have been really <laughs> difficult. I would like to know, we would like to know, what kind of obstacles did you face as a, did you face any obstacles because of your gender coming up through food science and how did you get involved in this industry? So I knew well before the age of five that I wanted to be involved with food and feeding the world. And feeding the world does not mean giving the food to the needy, but educating them so they would be better uh, in feeding themselves. But I also was very fortunate to have parents and grandparents who failed to tell me uh, about the limitations of my gender. So I did not know that I could not do everything. I believed I could do everything, and that's what I did. And so it helped to not know your limitations, to, to be blind to all these obstacles. And fortunately, nature provided me with this nice large body and very <laughs> large feet. So I was constantly stepping on different people's toes, but that was the way to get ahead. But to do that, <laughs> it really meant taking the bull by its horns and getting things done. But it also meant paying attention and making sure that when you paved the way to your, for yourself, you were also paving it for your sisters and nieces and aunts, etc., so they also could come up. So this, uh, you know, as they say, the, the rising tide raises all boats. Every time I had an opportunity, that's what I did. And at the, at the retail level, though, mm -hmm. I think that women make most of the decisions to bring products into the home, food, supplements. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. would, would you agree with that? Absolutely. Your average consumer is about a 40-year-old woman uh, in the natural products industry, uh -huh. is, um, and um, they're buying for their home, they're buying for their children, they're buying for their pets now, and that's why everyone should go to health food stores and buy all your products. <laughs> Uh, Heather, uh, uh, Whole Foods Magazine is mm -hmm. one of the iconic uh, publications in the industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a family-run business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was it like in that transition, taking that, that taking over the helm, if you will, from your dad? Um, it was. I was very blessed. Um, I mean, I will make a long story short um, that when I started, my father had me speak to other people that worked for their parents my first expo many years ago. Um, and I got kind of what it's like to work for a family business. And he didn't train me. Um, Ian Goldman's trained me, which was probably good as well. And um, basically, I just kept going through. And my dad will say, he didn't think, he didn't know what I was good at. Um, <laughs> Did you know what you were good at? Um, no, my dad will say, I thought the only thing she was good in college with was drinking beer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Um, but I did learn how to be healthy and I did learn other things as well. And um, you know, it was good to have the guidance and just, I found that, yes, I've always been a people person and I got to know more and more people. And I mean, hey, we've all been in this industry. You can't, it's, it's special. It really is special. So I kept growing and my father um, had some health issues along the way and just saw that I could just start taking over more and more. And it really was a really easy transition for me. When I first started, I was always Howie's daughter and people knew me as Howie's daughter, which is fine. It could be worse things to be known as. Well, um, I'm Winnie's mom, and that's yeah. the dog. So that's how people are for me in the yeah. building. So maybe it's better to be someone's daughter. Um, and it was like, you know, my dad had a really good reputation. Sure. And, um, you know, it was great. It was big footsteps of, for me to fall into. And um, as it kept growing, I just started just taking more, not realizing it. And he started taking a step back. And he has said that he realized, you know, he doesn't agree with every decision I make but he's stood by me in everything and this is where I've had conversations with other family businesses where that hasn't been the case and that's why it's been so easy. He's semi-retired now, he comes to the office two days 
a month. Um, you know, he's like, oh yeah, you're going to Expo this week. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's just one of those things where it has been a lot easier, but now people know him as Heather's dad. Uh. And that's, that's actually the proudest thing for him. Oh, wow. Is that when people it's say that. The yes. tables have turned. Yes, so I, I feel very blessed and very lucky that I did have my family business and that the trans and my father was had enough to realize that I can do this and to the foresight to let me do it and not pull me back. It's Have you point. had any pushback in that transition, either with staff, with um, advertisers, mm -hmm. with anybody? Um, never with advertisers, never with staff. Um, there has been some people in the industry that, yes, have not treated me as a complete equal, but as a whole, again, I do. I, I mean, I listened very closely to what Kantha said, and I've never been on the whole lecture circuit, but I've seen it. Um, I've always felt that there is a lot of women in this industry, strong women in this industry, and I have gravitated to them, but the tables have been turned. I've been at a dinners where I've been the only woman. Mm -hmm. I've been um, at meetings where I've been the only woman, and they've always treated me with the same respect. But I now see myself in all women dinners or all women um, meetings, which is, you know, the tables are turning where I see more people in the spots where I am working with. Um, so I don't, you definitely see it as a whole when you're looking around the world. But I do feel blessed in my corner of the industry that I haven't had a lot of pushback just from a few. My, my last thought with mm -hmm. you, have you had any issues with respect from the industry? Sometimes. Um, 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 sometimes and it would have been just because they felt they could push me around a little bit being a woman that they might be able to get a news story or they might be get some PR or free advertising or something like that. Um, and I've said my ground and they respected me in the end. She, she does stand her ground. That's, <laughs> that's the way it should be. She, 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 she stand her ground with me one time. Because <laughs> she asked me to be unnaturally informed, and I asked her to get paid, and she's like, we're not paying anyone, but I still did it. <laughs> and now I'm not paying you to be yeah, on the elephant exactly. in the room. Exactly. What comes around goes around. It's all ethics. But I do have to Did get you know that Joe Magazine is known as Heather's Magazine? No, I did not know that. <laughs> we should change the name. Remember. Well, well, I won't have that confusion with the story. Yeah. <laughs> they usually that's right. We have solved the whole okay. food's problem. No, I did not know that. Thank you. Heather's yeah, magazine. Thank you. That'll be next year. Kanza, yeah. you know, you've been in this industry for so long now. You learned a lot along the way, like you were talking to us. What advice would you give to younger women stepping into the science sector of our industry? If you had to give your younger self advice, what would it be now? So I would never be as presumptuous as to advise younger women because they're obviously entering this field because they're capable and they have the confidence. But I do have advice. And the advice is for the gatekeepers, the industry, those with power. And my advice to them is be careful. Be very careful. Because the time is right now for fiercely fabulous females entering yeah. the industry with power, with knowledge, and now with the ability and the collaborative force that women are bringing in to do what it takes. This is not about being seen. So when I mentioned that about a Nutrition Business Journal, it was not about being seen. It was about being represented mm -hmm. equitably. And that's the word, equitably. So what would I have said to the younger me? I wish I had said something like, do it now. Do it boldly. I was doing it, but surreptitiously. I was paving the way so I could get others in. Mm -hmm. I came in from privileged backgrounds and I made sure I would take in as many as I could. I wish I had been bolder and broken down those obstacles, but I am much bolder now, mm -hmm. and I don't mince my words. <laughs> F squared, <laughs> that's what we're gonna call it. That's cute. Fiercely. F oh yeah, what am I? Yes. I'm not yes. in science yes, and math. I, I think you are, <laughs> forgive me. But you were right there, you were, you were on the right I, I Okay, you, you correct But I do yeah, love it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you uh, both for uh, joining us. We look forward to uh, your panels coming up. Uh, this has been a special edition of Late Night Health uh, as we look at the behind the scenes, if you will, for the upcoming Elephant in the Room series. And we're going to have so many more panelists joining us. These are going to be airing all throughout our series to give you a behind the scenes look because I know you want more. You're going to watch the panels and you're going to be like, I want to hear a little bit more of what Kenneth and Heather has to say. So I'm glad you joined us today. And stay tuned because we're going to be airing more of these throughout the entire series. We'll see you on our next time.